welcome to the awesome Earthkind podcast. And if you would, please introduce yourself, let folks know who you are, where do you work, what kind of work you do. Hi, Ron. My name is Nicole Williams. I manage the Nice Egg and RG&E uh, clean heat program. It is a statewide, so New York State clean heat. Actually, sorry, I guess I'm sorry. No worries. Can we start, start over? over? Yeah, we'll start over. Yeah, over. I'm sorry. No, no, stop. Don't worry about it. And just, just relax, okay? You don't have to get yeah. every word right. It's not a big deal, okay? It's all fine. So no worries, okay? <laughs> In case you haven't noticed, I'm a little bit of a perfection. So yes, I know. I got to, okay, here we yes. go. Again, take another deep breath. Yep. <sighs> Centering breath. Do you do mindfulness stuff? Yes. Yes, I do. There you go. Just be mindful of the moment. Just breathe, relax. It's all good. This isn't going to be a big deal. Really isn't. So no worries. Okay. It's all great. So wonderful. Okay. Well, welcome to the, welcome to the awesome earth kind podcast. If you would let folks know who you are, what you do and where do you work? Hi, Ron. My name is Nicole Williams. I manage the New York State Clean Heat Program for NYSEG and RG&E, and I work in our conservation and load management department. Um, also, that's our energy efficiency department. Wow, fantastic. Well, we're going to talk all about that in a moment, but we like to start out with an inspirational quote. Do you have one that uh, would help to frame the conversation a little bit? Of course, of course. So it always seems impossible until it's done. Nelson Mandela. I love I, that quote. That's a fantastic quote. It really is true, isn't it? Right? So, so agreed. many things. Absolutely agreed. wonderful. Well, yep. we uh, let us start this piece with why. Why are you doing what you do? And why is NYSEG rg and &E involved in this work? Yeah, so as a utility, uh, NYSEG and rg &E strives to make every day better. That is actually a, a motto that we um, strive for and go for. Um, we make it better for the customer, better for the environment, and better to create a more sustainable uh, energy company. We'd like to be, you know, the leader. Sorry, let's start back with why. I got this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So why, why are you doing this, Nicole? And why is NYSEG and RG&A involved in this kind of work? Okay. Uh, we as a utility strive to make every day better. So that's better for the customer. It's better for the environment. And it's better as a company. Uh, we strive to be uh, a leader in sustainable energy in this country. Fantastic. A clean energy is truly a part of the utility's evolution. And of course, we do have some aggressive CLCPA goals to adhere to. So that CLCPA for folks who uh, haven't heard far, prior shows is the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act or New York State Climate Law. And it puts in place a whole host of programs to reduce our carbon footprint and get us to a sustainable state and as part of our international efforts to make a sustainable planet. So yeah, the CLCPA goals are pretty key and uh, it's great to see the utility taking a leadership position on it and how about for you why why are you doing this nicole well uh i actually uh, have about 20 years in uh working in the energy industry and throughout the various roles um, i've always been in a position to help a customer solve their challenge whether that be affordability or um, energy conservation. So I moved into our energy efficiency department about six or seven years ago, and it was the right fit for me. Uh, this is a place where I can then help our customers learn about technologies available to them to help conserve their energy usage, save on bills, and also, um, shoot, 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 sorry, total blank. Um, have, a, have a positive environmental impact, maybe? Yeah, oh my gosh. Um, okay, sorry, yes, and have a positive, should I just start that yeah, all over again? Yeah, start that whole piece again, yeah, so go ahead. Why, why do you do this, Nicole? I've been in the energy in this industry for about 20 years. 
Um, oh. And throughout my career in the utility, uh, I've been in various roles to that helped customers, uh, provided solutions to challenges that they may encounter, whether that be a affordability or uh, energy conservation. Excellent. So moving into our conservation and load management department, uh, it seemed like a good fit for me and the right fit for me uh, around six or seven years ago. Here, I'm able to work directly with the customers, work directly with our industry partners and in providing beneficial electrification solutions and also helping our environment. Nice, fantastic. So what, what kind of activities are you guys doing? What kind of clean energy action is NYSEG and RGN involved with? And maybe give an example or two of the kind of projects that you've been doing? Oh, absolutely. So like I was saying, you know, uh, clean energy is a part of the utilities evolution. Um, both companies actually joined the Electric Highway Coalition over the summer. Uh, that was a collaboration with neighboring utilities to enable long distance electric vehicle travel through a network of DC fast charging stations connecting major highway stations. So that was pretty cool. Really cool. Yeah, this past fall, NYSEG started injecting renewable natural gas derived from organic animal waste into the natural gas delivery system for our customers in Western New York. Wow. And then our appliance recycling program was just recognized by the EPA for year over year program growth. Uh, in 21, NYSEG and RGE customers have recycled 2,615 full size refrigerators, 556 standalone freezers, and 302 room air conditioners. So, removing these inefficient appliances from the electric system is the equivalent of taking 687 gasoline powered vehicles off the road. Fantastic. So with, with the clean heat program, so are you involved on incentives for the air source and the ground source heat pumps or those things that you guys are doing? Oh, of course, of course. So we, as a part of the statewide program, uh, NYSEG and RG&E has incentives for our air source heat pumps, uh, for our residential customers and small business customers, as well as ground source heat pumps. Um, we consider those our prescriptive categories. Those are your, uh, so to speak, plain and simple ground source and air source installations. And we provide incentives on those based on the size of the unit. So for example, your air source heat pump, that's $1,000 per 10,000 BTUs. So uh, again, based on the size of your unit, and uh, out of that incentive, uh, the contractors actually do receive a reward as well of $500. And that is off the top. Um, and then for our ground source, we offer $1,500 per 10,000 BTUHs. Again, this is for our residential and small business customer base. For those larger customers, uh, commercial and industrial customers, we do also provide uh, incentives. But that's cal it's based more so on your annual savings that you will incur by utilizing this tech or installing this technology. So for those, for the, the larger scale projects and for the more custom type projects, projects that you know are a little more innovative, um, we offer eighty dollars per MMBTU. We also offer um, hot water heating. Incentive, $700 for air source, $900 for ground source. And we offer uh, a bonus if you get a, a D superheater installed with your ground source heat pump, that's an additional $100 there. The way the program works is it is supposed to, uh, the incentive, the customers will receive the incentive as an offset to their total bill of sales. So our contractors are passing on the incentive and that's to offset that total initial cost to the customer, making it more affordable. Great, so so if I'm a nice or an RGE customer then, and I want to install one of these highly efficient, say air source heat pump instead of an air con central air conditioner um, or a ground source of geothermal heat pump, 
um, which uses the energy from the ground beneath our feet. So it's pretty, pretty neat to use that heat beneath our feet. Um, I think what you just said is basically, you know, looking at an average house that uses maybe four tons of heating and air conditioning load, that's like $4,000 for an air source and it's $6,000 for a geothermal. And that comes right off the top. It goes right to the contractor. So the customers only pay the net and therefore their out of pocket expenses dramatically reduce the pretty much right as i got that right yeah yeah exactly it's a, it's, a, it's more of an instant discount to our customer base absolutely uh, that's fantastic so so where do people where do people find out about these programs nicole Oh, sure. So we, we have uh, NYSEG and rg and &E have dedicated web pages to the Clean Heat Program. So you can go to www.nyseg.com forward slash clean heat. And the same for Rochester Gas and Electric. It would be www.rge.com forward slash clean heat. That will take you right to our page where we have a myriad of uh, information. Um, there's a lot of education there. We have buying guides for the customers. We discuss the general program um, guidelines and then we also have a specific page for our contractors too since they would need to be participating in the clean heat participating contractor network in order to perform these jobs receive the incentives yeah that's a really important part so there's a whole list right of those contractors that have done and it's really not that hard or difficult to process so if you have a, a, a contractor a heating ventilation air conditioning contractor that you like it's really not a big deal for them to sign up to become part of the program there's no cost for it there's just you know minimum qualifications to make sure that they can actually do what needs to be done so that you get a quality system so that's great that's wonderful excellent absolutely um, We'd like to ask, is there one sort of big, um, unique kind of, we call it a value supernova, a, a, a tip, a tool, a tactic that you think that people should know, but that most people don't that you'd like to share? Oh, one thing about geothermal, you know, ground source heat pumps are not a one size fits all. And I, I, I mean that by, um, you know, a lot of the times, uh, consumers will believe that you have to have a large yard in order to fit a ground source heat pump. And that's not always the case. There are vertical ground source heat pumps out there. There are also community geothermal units that can serve, you know, an entire development if necessary. So there are geothermal options out there for space constrained, you know, units and various building types. So don't rule it out if you don't have that big, big yard to um, install a, uh, you know, your typical horizontal ground source heat pump. There yeah. are other technologies. Wow, that's a really important and wonderful insight. And you're, yeah, absolutely. So I remember, you know, I've been doing energy stuff for a long time, 30 some odd years. And, and geothermal was always kind of more of an art than a science. But recently, it's really over the last five or so years become more really a wonderful science where instead of now, um, having to dig big horizontal wells, you can do that. So if you got a lot of land, you can dig a horizontal piece, and that's the least that could be a least expensive piece. But you can also put the pipes into a pond if you have a pond near your house, um, or as you're saying, even if you just have a small plot of land. I have a friend who has a plot that's really just a, a lot. I mean, it's teeny, mm -hmm. but they mm -hmm. went down and by the vertical drills, they just drilled various different ways, and he's got all his heating, cooling, hot water all coming from these vertical wells. And the great part about that now, too, is that they're all closed loop, or most of them are closed loop, which means that the fluid just goes in and it comes back That's and right. it just brings the heat. Um, so you don't have to worry about filters and all the different things that used to happen when people used to bring water in and take the heat out of that for geothermal. Now it's basically it's just a closed loop, which just cycles around and just brings that heat and uh, up from the earth. And the earth uh, absorbs like half the energy from the sun, which to me is always just amazing. So it's, uh, it's why geothermal is five times more more efficient than any fossil fuel because you're not burning anything you're just using that energy that's right underneath your feet so yeah that's a really great tip thank you so much absolutely not a problem so what's the one thing that you'd say you're most energized about today nicole well you know it's it's not necessarily just today 
Uh, it's today and beyond, Ron. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm really excited to see the innovation that's out there. Um, I- I'm excited to see how heat pumps um, are being used uh, to overcome building um, challenges and technology challenges even. Um, we have you know, various examples uh, where we've uh, provided incentives for aquaponic uh, facilities, had heat pumps, uh, where we provided uh, incentives for a huge uh, developer in downtown Rochester to take the, those old steam buildings and convert into total geothermal mixed use buildings. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, greenhouses, uh, you know, so there's a lot that this program is helping to, you know, support, of course, um, and adopt. And I'm very, very excited to see how we can incorporate uh, the, the technology going forward. Yeah, really great point. And, um, you know, for those who've been uh, watching the show and here and listening to the show for a while, you know, right now we're at the point where there's a lot of incentives, um, where the state is investing a lot of money to help people make this transition away from mm-hmm. fossil fuels into clean energy. But as we keep getting closer and closer to these timeline goals of 2030, 2040, and ultimately 2050, um, that's probably going to shift to where there's going to be more of the stick. Right now, we've got the uh, the sweet stuff happening where we've got the incentives, but eventually it's, if you don't start doing this, you're going to start getting hit with some penalties. And so it's really a, a fantastic time for people to take advantage of this. And I think it's great. I didn't know about that Rochester project. I had heard that there was a school actually on the South side of Binghamton that installed it under the football field after they had some uh, flooding issues away years back. And um, you know about that project or is that, is that? No. Uh, yeah. I think it was a MacArthur school. It's over on the South. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yes, yes, MacArthur. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, right. Yeah, after yeah, so. it flooded. That, yeah. yeah, right. So after after the whole big flood a dozen years or so ago. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, yeah, now it came out really great. It's under the football field, right? So hey, yes. you know, you don't even see it. It's just all right there. So it's a wonderful Yeah, they have a big track area. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's great, right? So wonderful. All right. Well, grand finale, if you would share a piece of parting advice and the best pit way for folks to get a hold of you if you'd like them to. Okay. Well, you know, one thing I can say, and I I know a lot of us like to do this as consumers, is we love to research, right? If there's something we're looking into, we love to research. And there's so many valuable web pages out there and communications filled with just tons of information regarding heat pumps and beneficial electrification. You know, of course, that's very important to do and compare your options. But also, I just want to, you know, advise always, please, when in doubt, consult with a professional in the industry. This program uh, that we are developing and we're about almost, well, we're a year and a half out in the program um, is also there to develop best practices on how these installation occurs and work with our industry partners in providing those uh, practices throughout their installations. So, you know, we work very hard to make sure that everyone also has, you know, the most, that's not good. Sorry. Can I, can I go back? Yeah, sure. Of course. I'm sorry. Don't okay. worry. Stop. Don't worry. Go ahead. <sighs> you were doing great, by the way, you were fine, but that's okay. <laughs> go back and start wherever you want to start. So. All right. All right. So as consumers uh, in this day and age, we all do like to research things that we're going to buy, whether it's a vehicle to a vacuum, a new dish set. So, you know, there's there's very uh, valuable information that's published regarding heat pumps and the benefits and, you know, sizing. Uh, but when in doubt, always please um, contact and consult a professional in this industry, especially a participating contractor in the Clean Heat Program. Um, you know, as a part of the Clean Heat Program, we are working hard to define um, and implement best practices and standards in installations. So um, always, always consult with, with your contractor. Uh, 
Um, and also please always reach out to me. I can be reached at nicole.williams at niceegg.com. Very easy. Email is my preference. Um, and I will always get back to you. Again, I have no hesitation on discussing anything having to do with clean heat, heat pumps, the environment. Um, and nice. thank you. And thank you. And was there anything that, that you wanted to cover that we didn't uh, touch on, Nicole? No, I think I'm all set. Thank you. Ah, great. Well, thank you so much, Nicole Williams of NYSEG and RG&E. Um, as the parent company, I guess it's Eberdrola, is that how you say it? Or avant-grid, uh, avant-grid, avant avant I forgot, grid. right, avant-grid, there we go. Uh, so thank you, Nicole Williams of Nice Egg, rg &E, a company of avant-grid. You are wonderful, really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Ah, great, Nicole. So, um, so yeah, tell, tell us a little bit more about the program and how it works and uh, what kind of folks you got involved and yeah, all like that, please. Yeah, no problem. So customers who would like to access any information regarding the NYSEG and rg &E New York State Clean Heat Program can always go right to our web pages. That's at www.nyseg.com forward slash clean heat or www.rge.com forward slash clean heat. Uh, there we have a lot of information for customers as well as the contractors looking to uh, become participating in the clean heat network. We do have buying guides there, a nice uh, catalog of our incentives. Um, and, you know, a lot of information that will help anyone uh, considering heat pumps in their, you know, decision. Another really great resource uh, are our clean heating and cooling campaigns. Uh, so they are heat smart representatives in the various territories. There's Central New York, there's Tompkins, Putnam County, they're, they're all over the state. Um, and they are here to educate um, small businesses and homeowners about heat pumps, beneficial electrification, ground source, air source, hot water heating, um, you know, the various benefits and how you can obtain one. And they also uh, can get you connected with a participating contractor to help your decision. Great. So that's Heat Smart, the Heat Smart campaigns in various communities. Outstanding. Yes. Yes. Hey, you mentioned the word beneficial electrification a few times. And just for folks who don't know, what is beneficial electrification? Sure, no problem. That's where we're omitting fossil fuels, basically. We're taking and converting um, from alternate fuel sources um, and converting to electric but we're actually not producing the electric here. We're actually transferring it, thus making it beneficial. You're talking, you know, 50 to 75% or 100% uh, more efficient than other fossil fuels. Great. I'm so, going to stop it so, there. No, it's okay. So it's wonderful. So basically beneficial electrification is taking fossil fuels out of the mix and using clean electricity to power everything from yes. our electricity system, through our heating and cooling systems, through our electric vehicles and transportation systems. And it's all cool, really neat, thank you. Thanks. All right, anything else that you wanted to that's touch it, on? That's it, that's it, that's it. That's it for now? Okay, all right. Well,